This week on Awesome Cast, we're going to talk about some Google phones and what's missing if you pick up a Nexus these days. Google Wallet and all the applications that are going to be coming up with it. And a party's being thrown for those on live guys that just got fired. But by who? Welcome to the Awesome Cast number 116. I'm Michael Sorg right here in the studios in Pittsburgh, PA. It's the podcast where we talk technology and awesome stuff and gadgets and doodads in the internets. And not fancy.com. And not you fancy.com. Forgot fancy. You forgot the weasel wobbits. Also with us is Shaji on the couch in the studio with the mustache. On the microphone. On the microphone. Mustache microphone. Of the world famous insert coin to begin dot com. Correct, sir. Gaming news for gamers by gamers. That's a good tagline, sir. I know. And also with us is... Uh... Well, Taylor Kratos here. <laughs> I was trying to weld stuff today, but people kept sending me invitations to the fancy.com. Stop that. <laughs> He's so angry. He's so... Why are you so angry? Why do you hate our stories? Because they don't involve a thousand forty-inch TVs made into a phone booth. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's <laughs> Rob is going to be so angry. <laughs> he is. That's okay. He doesn't listen to the show. Frank Janelle with at Fuzzwad joins us yep. once again from InsertCoinToBegin.com. And uh, good, good job on the beard finding there. Yeah, yeah. I, I literally threw that together in ten minutes before the show. <laughs> nice. But nice. now, b- because I made my hair do that, it's like rock solid. So, yeah, whatever. <laughs> That's a good do for the rest of the show. I love yeah. show pick. <laughs> awesome. Uh, like I said, this is the Awesome Cast. That's Chachi. I'm Sword. Um, this is the Awesome Cast. Uh, we're, we're here live every Tuesday. It's around about uh, 7 p.m. Eastern uh, here on the East Coast at live.sorgatronmedia.com. Uh, you can uh, follow us on Twitter at AwesomeCast. You can drop us an email at uh, contact at AwesomeCast.com. Uh, check us out over on AwesomeCast.com for all the past episodes and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, whoop, there it is. There yeah. it is. Uh, hey, there it is. There it is. And uh, fancy new blip players going on there that hopefully uh, aren't as, as bunk as they used to be. Um you can also uh, uh, check us out. Wait, I got to get my notes back. There we go. Hey, we're on iTunes, Roku, uh, Blip TV, YouTube, and Stitcher. And uh, and you can find us here every week. Please subscribe to us. Tell your friends about us. Uh, if you want to talk to us about this episode, anything we talk about, please tag it. Uh, hashtag AC116 so we know exactly what you're talking about. Uh, you know, which episode and everything like that, wherever you're at, at uh, you find us. We're on Facebook and Google Plus as well. So let's get right with it. Frank, you have some stuff submitted here. What, what's what's going on? Okay, uh, pick whatever you're going to show first, and then I'll talk about it. I'm going to show the Galaxy Nexus HSPA Plus for 350 So, um, as we all remember a few shows ago... Um, I had rooted and roamed my Verizon Galaxy Nexus so that I could get Jelly Bean. Yeah. And I did that the same time that AJ had purchased a uh, Galaxy Nexus through Google that shipped with Jelly Bean. Yes. Now it ships with Ice Cream Sandwich, and we'll get Jelly Bean in the future. Uh, yeah, actually, I, I see this right here. Um, let's, see, let's see if I can... Uh Soon this in, but it says, yeah, ships with Android 4.0, soon to be upgraded to Android 4.1 Jelly Bean. What in the world happened? I don't know. I have no idea, like, what happened with that. All I can guess is, is it's some sort of aftermath from the obvious big tech story of the week. But I, I can't see how, unless it's something with the uh, whole unified search issue. But, um yeah, I just looked to see if it was still available after all the uh, lawyerish proceedings and whatnot, and yeah, saw that, and that just doesn't make any sense. But yeah, for those who don't know, there's a big uh, court case handed down uh, the verdict: uh, uh, Samsung versus Apple on a bunch of patent stuff. Um, but also remember, Motorola is now getting into it with uh, with Apple, which is a Google subsidiary now. Um, of some uh, sort. Mo- Motorola just uh, cut a deal with them in Germany. They did cut a deal with them in Germany. Yep, but that's Germany still. Um, yeah. And I presume this page only applies to the U.S. Yeah. For the most part. Um, so maybe it's something else. Maybe something else is up that they need to clear or they're like uh, pulling back the reins on it. 
uh, until that does get clear, or or maybe it's a delivery thing, you know. But yeah. that's strange since they already had them. Um, is, is this- it had been shipping for how long too? Because you figure that was shipping since the end of July, so they've been shipping it for about a full month, mm-hmm. and now they decide not to ship it with Jelly Bean. Yeah, yeah. I, I'm sure they have a perfectly good reason for it, and you'll still get it be- sooner than you'll get it on a Verizon Samsung phone, right? Um, speaking of, uh, I didn't put this into notes, but uh, some people were approaching Sprint and Verizon, mm-hmm. and they are about as tight-lipped as anything for whenever the Nexus is going to get uh, the OTA Jelly Bean update. So if you have a Nexus and you're waiting on Jelly Bean, just root it. Yeah, okay, it's not like it's hard. Uh, yeah. well, wait, it isn't hard, is it? Oh, God, no. Uh, just <laughs> don't be like me. Back up your contacts beforehand so you aren't there the next morning for an hour and a half typing in all the phone numbers you accidentally uh, deleted. Uh, you know, I, I, I might have one worse. We accidentally merged uh, uh, my wife's contacts with mine on iCloud when we first signed up for it. Somehow. I remember you telling me about that. That That's was fun. horrible. I still have, like, who? Why, why do I have this person? Who is this person? And it's, like, some lawyer she works for or something. I was like, ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, let's try not calling these guys by accident. I, you know, let's not get drunk on New Year's and start texting everybody Happy New Year through there. Um, <laughs> that could be an interesting. Who are you? Well, who are you? You're in my phone book. Uh, you got another one here. Uh, the Samsung opens its first experience retail store, and it does look a lot like an Apple store. Which yeah, it it's it's just like especially after what's been going on with them, for them to come out with this is just ridiculous. But the best part. Scroll down and read the second paragraph, word for word, for what the Droid fan site says about this place. Okay, it, it says, uh, crazy enough, all employees are required to also wear blue shirts, and that's just because Samsung's company colors hap- happens to be blue. I, for one, look forward to the day an experience store opens up near me. I can go in there, buy a Galaxy Tab, and then return it, seeing that I was uh, mistaken and thought it was an Apple store buying an iPad. That's funny. Yeah. <laughs> How fitting is that? Because that came down before the ruling too. That, yeah, that, yeah, that they posted that. But we you know it was kind of going that way from all the all the talks and everything like that. You know, I guess we can't we can't escape it. I wanted to. There's so many people talking about the verdict and everything. I guess let's try yeah. to be the briefest podcast on it possible uh, okay. when talking about this. So Samsung versus a- Apple. Uh, Apple won the case. This was a trademark and infri- not trade. I'm sorry, a patent infringement deal. Yes, um, uh, six different. Uh, yeah, six different patents. Uh, it was found that it in, that there were eight phones found guilty of infringing on it, uh, which the Galaxy Nexus was not one of them, which makes that even stranger about how the Jelly Bean uh, shipment was pulled out. Yeah. But anyways, but there's so many patent things going on with uh, with Android right now. So it, it could be anything. Yeah, but the the one interesting thing that was found though in one of the commentaries uh, that the uh, jury foreman um, in an interview that he had afterwards. Uh, he said that Android, um, just of itself, does not infringe at all on anything that Apple has put out. It was all stuff that Samsung had worked into their TouchWiz UI, which, if you've never seen TouchWiz, it looks like some like five-year-old's ripoff of iOS. Like y- You can tell that they were copying it from the beginning. Google's told Samsung in the past, change it because you look too much like an iPhone, but they didn't. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, the the funny thing is, there is a lot of stories coming out about how hard this is going to hit Samsung um, and like how screwed they are. But the thing is, it doesn't affect any current devices. The most current device that's affected by this is the Galaxy S2, which came out around the same time as the Galaxy Nexus last November. Um, but other than that, it's just devices that were older than that. The, uh, the Fascinate and the Charge for Verizon, which were both they're both two-year-old phones now. So the Galaxy S3 is not affected. I don't believe that the Galaxy uh, Note 10.1, that new tablet with the stylus they just came out with, that's not affected. Uh, the one that is affected that could hurt them is the Galaxy Tab 10.1. But even still, that thing just isn't getting any reviews that are really all that great from what I've heard. But the big hit is $1 billion. One billion dollars sorry which yeah. podcast did you steal that from what i'm sure another podcast has had to use that joke oh, I, yeah. i'm sure i'm sure yeah but anyway samsung's going to appeal it 
But the funny thing is, Google's, Google came out and said uh, that they are not responsible for how Samsung used the Android operating system, being that it's open source. Mm -hmm. Google hands it out to people, says do what you want with it. Um, and they aren't going to like come to the rescue or anything, even though Samsung is the considered one of the top developers for Android phones at this point. Yeah, yeah. With, uh, with, with, oh, go ahead. But it's Samsung. It was Samsung's doing. I mean, it was it was. They were obviously trying to make it look as much as possible as Apple, and we were seeing this with the store. Even um, they're they're trying to they're they're trying to copy they, they, instead of innovate. And now they're they're getting to the point where they're innovating a bit more with stuff like the Note. Um, and, and everything like that, but still, it's... Yeah, they, they've been coming out with stuff on the S3 that is truly innovative and is good. But it's just the fact that their history up until now has been, let's make the Android-powered iPhone. Mm -hmm. Because you can even look, it has this giant button, just dead center in the bottom. Yeah. Just like an iPhone. Every phone of theirs, for a good while, all of the Galaxy S2s, had that. And it looked terrible. Mm -hmm. in that uh in in the way that they did it but like it you could just tell looking at all of their phones that they were copying the iphone and it is kind of sad that they're getting hit with that because they are like yeah there's the button right there mm -hmm. um all of their recent phones have that except for the uh galaxy nexus and i'm not sure if the s3 has that or not but um anyways uh yeah, so the king of making the good powerhouse Android phones is taking a hit, which segues into one of the other stories I sent you. Click on the Droid Life link now. And go. And the LG Optimus G, which you're reading that correctly. It's a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core processor, 7-inch display, 720p, 2 gigs of RAM, First phone that will be released in the U.S. with 2 gigs of RAM on it and 4G LTE, all that other good stuff, ships with ice cream sandwich. It is just the best specs you can get. And it's not that bad looking. It's not the best looking phone ever, but with specs like that, it's, it's bound to be something worthwhile to look at. And the interesting thing is, I'm not sure if it's been officially announced for the U.S. for shipment yet. Okay. Uh, so if you want to just play the rumor mill a little bit, think about what Google had said earlier this year, that they want to expand the Nexus program where they're releasing different tiered phones at a time. Um, and it kind of follows suits with how a uh, model number was spotted from the Galaxy Nexus, which is, uh, I, I forget whatever it is, but it's like 9250. They they saw a 9260 in a system that just had a few updated things, which looked like a good mid-range phone. That thing looks more like the high-end phone, so it looks like there's a chance that they're going to release multiple Nexus phones this year where uh, they have just your low-level basic phone that might not be the gargantuan screen that some people like, and then you'll still have like the big powerhouse quad-core, like basically what that LG is. So it looks like... like there's a lot of signs pointing now that Google is going to have a multi-phone Nexus program going on now. Hmm. So, yeah. Hmm. But yeah, 1.5 gig quad-core processor and 2 gigs of RAM on a phone, it's just ridiculous. It's a good time to be an Android power user with stuff like that coming out, that's for sure. So uh, let's, let's let's stay on the Google train for a while. Uh, this was interesting uh, and surprised me because now when when I'm loading a page and like maybe I have a lot of stuff going on on a computer and I want to make sure the Internet works, you know, where do you go? Where do you go to make sure the Internet is working on a computer? Right. Google dot com. Right. Is, is anybody else along the same line here? I go to Porsche dot com because I think their cars are tasteless and I never look for them anyway. So I know if the Porsche website loads then it's working. But that's just me. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, they, they changed a little bit here, and I'll actually reload it so you can kind of see what happens here. So, you know, Google.com's always been like the, the smallest one, and it's not even animating now because I was already on it. But uh, but the, this little zip opens up, and a little animated uh, uh, Nexus 7 starts popping up, and they're advertising it. Um, so, so is this what we had to expect from Google.com now? Mm -hmm. 
I don't know. It could be, but the fact that it's something that Google made in house, it's just Google's moving a lot of those. Like yeah, yeah. yeah every, every, everywhere you hear, someone's getting one. I'm I'm actually probably going to be ordering two of them later this week. One yeah. for myself and one for my fiance. Uh, my fiance's mom just got one last week. It's just a good cheap device that's easy to use. There's no crap on it at all because it's a Nexus phone or Nexus device. But yeah, it's just an excellent tablet, yeah. and Google's just pushing it as much as they can to keep them selling. Plus, uh, they just released it in, I believe, three or four new new countries this week. Mm-hmm. So it kind of goes along with that. I don't think that you're going to start seeing ads for other things on no, Google.com. No, no, I don't think so either. Um, I, and I, and you got to remember, have you ever, what's the last thing you went to Google.com not in Chrome and seen the prompts to install Chrome? They're using a lot of muscle power there with oh, yeah. that. I mean, we're, we're seeing that with Google Plus because anytime you sign in, it tells you to activate uh, your Google Plus account in some fashion. So, yep. so Google is trying to use their own Google juice to push Google things and keep you in their ecosystem and, and sell the actual products they have to sell now. Which well, is, even like... Um, which is smart. Really, it's smart. On, on my work computer, I set up a uh, Google account just so I can sync things between uh, my work browser and... Uh, my work tablet and um, what is it if, if I just go to news.google.com and I'm scrolling down through it actually prompts you to sign in with Google Plus yep. because they have like a little points reward system for looking up different stories and it gives you like you know uh, you have this uh, trophy for looking up stuff about the election or that trophy for looking up stuff about tech so yeah everywhere you look on Google they're pushing other Google things Mm-hmm. which is smart it is it is and you don't see that too much like you know there i know uh, i was watching mac break today and they were um uh you know kind of comparing to other search engines of course we have like like bing is it, it has their crazy picture things so they're not really a low level loading one here there's definitely a lot of interesting uh uh html going on there go to yahoo search which is actually yahoo.com slash search and they have a video ad for their uh access uh browser for the desktop wait they have a browser yeah, they, well, they, they they had it out. Uh, we talked about this, I think, a few months ago, briefly. Oh, uh, that's that one. It's a different kind of browser for like at the time it was for like the iPad and iPhone, uh, and it, it was supposed to be like a new way. I don't know. I I, I didn't really get it. So uh, so so I mean that makes sense. But really, who's using Yahoo Search anymore? You know, they definitely definitely not there. <laughs> the other one they brought up today, I thought was funny, was go to ask dot com, and see how. Uh, how much they have going on it was like i think like when they had it earlier there was like a ford commercial and all this stuff um oh and actually i have ad block on so you're not going to see much of it right now but uh you see a lot of blank space there that's for sure whoa there you go um all right what else we got here did you guys hear about this uh i didn't put it in the rundown this is something I actually i just heard this afternoon uh about the guy at the fifth avenue store we've been there chach um in New York City, that uh, bought a pair of headphones. He is actually in a, uh, to work on a, a get his uh, trackpad looked at. I think on his MacBook at the Genius Bar. Uh, and I don't know if you know. Uh, uh, there's actually an app. If you have the Apple Store app, I believe it is on your iPhone. You can actually just pick up an item, scan it, and basically purchase on, on your phone and walk out. Right? You know, it, it's, that's cool. I mean, it feels weird enough when I hand some, something to somebody and they scan my credit card and I walk out, you know. It, it, it's kind of similar to that whole tabbed out whenever you're at a restaurant and you just touch your phone a little bit and then you're like, okay, I just paid. Let's go. Yeah, exactly. The, the waiter doesn't even come near you. Yeah. A- apparently, uh, so he did this. He, he uh, got his headphones, did the did the paid thing and everything like that. Uh, even went to, because I guess it does prompt you to say, if you need a bag, go up to a Apple person and, and they'll, they'll give you a bag. Um Apparently did that, went to his appointment, started to leave uh, with the headphones in the bag. And uh, I, I think the, the manager, security, everybody stopped him at the door. And uh, now he, and he spent a night in jail. When they looked at the phone, there was uh, uh, the uh, push to pay button was not selected yet. And they didn't even get him, give him a chance to, to buy the thing that he, he intended to uh, when they confronted him. So, uh, so yeah, so, and apparently he's from New Jersey, so he had to spend a night in jail, and, uh, and he's, uh, he's uh, pursuing, I think, pursuing litigation against him uh, for this whole thing. He's fighting it. Um, so, I mean, that, that, 
that's kind of the problem because like if, if you do this wrong what if tabbed out doesn't work and you just walked out of a bar without paying oh you yeah know? well what, that's what if, something that i wonder about sometimes too with uh whenever i use google wallet because um like you know you never know if it's not going to pick everything up in your order or if they're going to hit something wrong like uh like for me there's a local gas station i go to uh sheets that you know you can do the touch screen thing get yourself a sandwich and then grab a soda and then they ring you up and what if something happens where they hit the wrong thing and you pay for the soda but not for the sandwich you yeah, know what happens yeah. then who's I, at fault yeah just, and, and i think they used to have that as more of an honor system but you notice I just, well not any of them not that any of them really enforce this but if you haven't paid if, if they haven't seen somebody has paid for this they will take it up to the front uh check out at sheets um or or a lot of them say put your receipt you know give us your receipt some of them do actually check the receipt that you have in hand i haven't uh, had that happen for a while before you hand your sandwich no it doesn't happen like it seemed like there was a rash of them and everybody did them for like a week and then and then everybody was lax with it again so I, it's, it's one of those things but it but other than that you know because you gotta you gotta think somebody's eventually somebody's walking off with a sandwich or the wrong yeah. sandwich or or just just kind of hanging out and grabbing somebody's sandwich when somebody doesn't jump to, at it and uh and they got a free sandwich it makes yeah. sense the only thing i can add to this is the only reason i've ever stuck to that receipt policy at sheets is when they mess up yeah yeah i never want to give them my receipt because then it's like well then i just gave away the proof that i got the right thing right you know so um, but I don't know. This, this is definitely this is definitely an issue. Apparently, the the fellow was banned from the Fifth Avenue she, uh, sheets. Yeah, Fifth Avenue Apple Store went back to one of the other Apple stores and got the headphones he wanted in the first place because he really wanted the headphones. Um, but th- I think there's going to be an issue with something like this. You know, Dear um, I God. mean, it's like you still need somebody to supervise when you have self checkout at the grocery store. Yeah, I mean, granted, it's one person supervising in like four lanes. Uh, you know, same with the Home Depot or something else like that. Yeah, but uh, that machine. Yeah, that machine will yell at you. It does. It does get very angry. Says yeah. you can't do something like this. Uh, somebody was talking about on another podcast I was listening to. Said uh, they were trying to check out with like two items and uh, didn't realize that you can't. You can only do one item at a time through through the checkout system. Um, and and they almost maybe made the same mistake there. I. It's just. I, they're, they're bending the rules here a little bit, like you know, that we accept as consumers, like, OK, I went through a checkout process and now I can leave. You know, it, it already feels weird that there's no cash register there, registers there. And and I don't know. I don't know. I, what are your checks with this? Because somebody can just walk up to something, scan and walk out. And how do you know as the store that that happened? You know, what what is like the backup processing on that thing? So. I, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see, well, one, how that turns out and see if there's any more incidents like this from something like that. So we'll see. I can also see problems like, say you do designate someone to watch the computer screen to say, OK, someone's getting this. Like, then you get the uh, whole effect of, oh, wait, where's there's a guy with the headphone? Where, you know, and you're just, you know, just straining, looking around, going crazy, trying to figure out, wait, OK, which person just bought the headphones? Yeah. And you see yeah. Three people with headphones. What do you do? Yeah, yeah. Well, and as it is, he like went up to somebody and got a bag and put the headphones in a bag. The Wapple guy watched him do it. And then at what point did this become a problem? So, I mean, it could be a, like maybe it was like a store manager that's not con- completely comfortable with the new policy, you know, and a new application there and didn't know how to deal with it. Uh, uh, who knows? And especially something like the Fifth Avenue store. That's the one that's one right there in front of uh, FAO shorts on, on the uh, corner of uh, 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 Central Park. You know, so so of course, you're going to be a little weary. It's a big store. There's a lot of people in and out. Uh, so they're watching out for anything suspicious, you know, uh, but it could be game too. So, the, you know, the, you know, the other way, you know, they can be like, well, I did most of the process. Oh, it didn't, you know, trying to shop shoplift and you get caught and say, oh, I, I guess I didn't push the button. Uh, I'll take care of that now. It's like, no, you're trying to shoplift. You know, which way do you go with that? Yeah. So, trying to... <laughs> Chachi's just singing. Um, all right. Uh, with that, this is... Uh, Frank, have you... No, no, Chachi, you've flown. We, 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 I fly. Uh, we've talked about that before. Uh, Frank, I believe you have too, sir? Yeah. Uh, the FAA, it seems, is, uh, is uh, forming a committee to study the use of electronics on planes. We've already discussed it's about it. damn time. Move on. No, this is a new story. No, we've discussed this already. When did we discuss this? Uh, six months ago. Great yeah, detail. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I remember this one. 
in great detail and length. Well, then, uh, you're going to say that it's to study the use of electronics, and if they do actually interfere with the navigation equipment on a plane, uh, so that they can quit having all the issues whenever they have someone <laughs> tell someone, turn your MP3 player off, we're about to take off. And well, they say, I no, guess I'll play, I'll play Rob. All right, all right. And point out that that rule is hugely outdated, and that the FAA are a bunch of F and A's and... <laughs> And A's. Yeah. And well, A's. either so way, we'll this is on. this is the story this week, as if that never happened. I, I guess the news is, news is uh, six months later, they finally formed a committee. Oh. So, there you go. Okay, that, that, so that shows how quick this is going to come. We, we updated it. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, that's an update for you. There you go. Moving uh, on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, it's, we're not going to spend another... 20 minutes talking about something that we covered six months No, ago. no, no, no. And I, I actually didn't remember that we talked about it a while ago. I mean, it, it's just, that's what's out in the news cycle right now, you know? I know. So, well, the um, government's slow and stupid. So. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, all right. Uh, As it is, I always forget to turn off my cell phones when flying. So, and I'm still here. Yeah, yeah. Which means I didn't crash the plane. Yeah, yeah. So... Yeah, we're good. One one day I'll, I'll I'll feel the pain of flying. Um, so Chachi, you got anything from InsertCoinToBegin.com? dot <laughs> com? I got I, well, not specifically from Insert Coin. Um, I, I've taken to having this as my own little nerd segment of the show. Okay. Where I cover stuff that you guys don't cover. Okay. Um, uh, Microsoft had a little party. Okay. You want to take a stab at who their main audience was? I or guess. No, I, I have no idea. Oh, the 200 on live employees that were fired? What? <laughs> it's pretty genius, if you ask me. Okay, okay. Who better to hire to increase your cloud based gaming service than people who speciali specialized in cloud based Wait, Is this a metaphor? Did they really have a party? Yeah. Okay. No, they, they, they invited all these employees over to the campus and had to get together. And probably chit chatted them up and offered a lot of them jobs. Wow! Hold on, I'm going to find a story on this. Uh, here's one from Paul Throck. Um We'll see his load. load and here. it turns out that the only person in the merger, despite other reports, that kept their job was the CEO. Really? Yes. So. So despite him saying he wasn't keeping his job either. Yeah, I heard about that change, and yeah, he yeah. He kept his job. So that's a little fishy. So there goes OnLive. Yeah, here's this, here's one from uh, Windows IT Pro from uh, Paul Thorot. Uh Microsoft takes OnLive to task for offering free Windows. Oh, uh, this is something else, actually. Uh, Hold on. I, I sorry, have this, sorry. It's the wrong one. I have the story bookmarked. Yeah, because well, Microsoft <laughs> was kind of upset with them. Uh, there's there some uh, uh, mentions on their blog when they did the OnLive desktop. Uh, that, yeah, you're not using your licenses right, and maybe we should have a discussion. Okay. Uh, it was it was Monday. Mm -hmm. uh, it says Microsoft will be throwing an industry mixer for the 50-ish percent of online employees affected by the company's restructuring. Uh, mm. Hiring managers will be on site, and they are scouting for Xbox-oriented positions. <laughs> Microsoft flat out said... We are eager to speak with individuals and teams affected by the on-live transaction. We are looking to add key players who want to make a real impact in creating groundbreaking new products and services. And now, to be clear, this doesn't mean that they're necessarily going to do an on-live type service. These are people that are various engineers, programmers, you know, whatever. That are familiar with, with, networks, with networks and, and cloud-based gaming. gaming. Yes, so, so that could that that could turn into something that could do, turn into an R and D project that we don't see until like the Xbox Four. You know, you you never know. I would um, just like to take the opportunity to applaud Microsoft for being geniuses. You know, it, it's it's really surprising. Like you go uh, watch the videos about like Microsoft R and D. They have some really cool stuff they're working on up there, and, and and we're kind of seeing some of that come out like with stuff like the surface it's intriguing for whatever you think you know um and, and, and some of these these other pieces of hardware they're, they're trying to push technology for whatever you think windows is kind of uh being a lot of about stuff um but you, you can see that with how they're changing things with windows you know they're taking chances you know um so so good on that so if, uh, other than that like online still going online still strong other than that 
Was there anything about the, the new guy that took over? No, this there, week? there's no? been no further updates as far as that goes. Okay, all right. Uh, On Live is still alive and up and running. So, I mean, that part was true. Okay. Everything else was an utter lie. Apparently, that's awesome. Um, so I maybe shouldn't spend some more money with On Live at this point. No, probably. It not. feels like it feels like like that's the problem is now like these stories come out. I was like, do I want to do I want to go with that company for? I mean, it, you know, I, I I put my money in the games in the cloud with Steam, but I kind of trust Steam will be there. You know, when I, I hear something like this, you know, just like I don't completely trust a. Uh, 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 Zynga with my information because I see how it treats its employees and the companies acquires. Well, speaking of Steam, mm -hmm. for twenty five dollars through Amazon, yeah, you can get GTA Four, uh, Liberty City Stories, which includes the DLC and Max Payne Three. Yeah, you yeah you almost got me with that today. <laughs> you seriously, when I saw that, I almost bought it. I, just um, to let you I know. want to, but I yeah yeah. But it, since when are they selling Steam codes through Amazon? I, Is I that have new? no idea. The oldest guy that works in my office, and I'm not kidding, he's seriously like two ways two years away from retiring, mm -hmm. only because he has to stick around for that long. Okay. Um, he was like, "Hey, do you happen to have uh, uh, Max Payne three? First off, all right, I, I, I'm sitting there. It's like I threw you in the first place. I, I'm, like, I'm watching. Why are you asking me about Max Payne, old man? Like, I, I'm taking calls, and I, I'm watching Netflix, and I'm getting caught up, and I'm doing all this this crap at work. And all of a sudden, the guy who I'm pretty sure has never touched a video game in his life uh, starts asking me about Max Payne 3. <laughs> And he's like, well, Amazon has a deal on it and some game called Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> he's like, yeah, it's like, he's like, you know what, I'll just send you the link because I don't understand it. And yeah, he sent me the link and it was a, a Steam purchase on Amazon. Now, I've used this before. I've actually used uh, Amazon to buy... Uh uh, to pick up some, uh, uh, you know, Xbox stuff. Like I think, I, you know, some like some of the Xbox Live stuff. Right. Because uh, you just plug in the code and you have it. But you get the better deals through right. Amazon. And versus you hardly see any deals through Xbox uh, on any of that stuff. And, and, it, and it's funny to find something like that on Amazon when Steam has the most ridiculous deals on the planet. It seems like. So, but that that's that's a great deal. Twenty five bucks for both those games. That's like, that's a lot of games. I barely, I barely cracked into like GTA Four since I picked it up on like a five dollar sale like two years ago. On so, Steam, yeah, yeah. So I, I got one of those packs or something that has like all. Even though I have all of them on the PlayStation Two, it has like all the like San Andreas and Three and Vice City and all that stuff. So why not? You know, and it all works on the Mac. So right. You know, and the PC, so whatever I have, I can drop GTA on. What time so, do we have? I have no idea. What time? <laughs> All my clocks are broken. Um, it's 7.51. 7.51. Ah, we can do another, like, 20 minutes. All right, we well, started late. Time. I got one more thing. Okay. It's 6.51 um, Canadian. Thank you. Yes. So, like, in all of Canada? No. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I got one more thing. I didn't know Canada um, was all time, one time zone. I, I know they're not a sponsor, so if Rob listened to the show, he would yell at me for okay. giving away free advertising space. Um, but I, if you, I think that's the last thing he would yell at you about here. He does it all the time. Okay. Anytime I start, quote-unquote, pitching a product, he yells at us for free advertising space. Okay. Pitch it. LootCrate.com. Okay. Go and subscribe. It's amazing. Um, if you're not aware of it, Loot Crate is a uh, subscription service where once a month they will send you a mystery box filled with nerd themed goodies. Mm -hmm. um, and I love it. it's 1337 or Elite for the uninitiated. Yes. Plus six dollars shipping and handling. So it's like 19 something. Yeah, 1997. So that's not bad. No. For, for all you get. Yeah, you get 30 to 40 dollars worth of stuff. Um, I, w the first one came out. Uh, I got uh, turkey, perky, jerky. I, I can actually pull out the box. Yeah, you got it here, right? Yeah, I, I can pull out the box. Ta -da! Pull it out. There you go. No, please be descriptive for our audio listeners. But um, it, it's it's a, a box seriously smaller than a shoe box. Mm -hmm. Um, but in it, 
It uh, comes packed with uh, lots of fun stuff. Uh, turkey perky jerky, mm-hmm. energy beef jerky, or turkey turkey uh, turkey turkey. Okay. Um, pone energy gum. Okay, which we had uh, Saturday night at the at the wrestling shoot. Yeah, it works amazing. Holy crap! You want a piece? Holy crap! Was I on top of things all <laughs> night long? Like that is the best switch show I think we've done all year. Yeah. Um, I'm taking some right now. A uh, it's green. A it's limited green. piece Look of that. art from the hip hop nerd, and it's numbered and everything. And this stuff doesn't suck like the other energy drunk gum we have. No. Um, and the the thing that made it really uh, prove that it was worth it was the fact that they included a... And I'm going to cover up the serial number because they put it on the front for some reason. Um, but they included a $20 gift card mm-hmm. for a website. Uh, this one is for Gentle Giant, which makes uh, a bus in action figures. Um, Jolt Energy Gum, a little Gangster Domo keychain, and possibly the greatest item you could ever get... Oh, Avengers, sorry. Avengers themed c- cologne, and you got. Uh, I got the uh, the smash, which is uh, Hulk's. I still um, I still have some of it on my hand. Yeah, it's and for, and for those listening, it's dead easy to sign up because when Chachi started talking about it, I signed up and I just finished. Just got my confirmation email. Yeah, so there oh, you go. Um, Only takes a few minutes. The and I mean it, it's worth it. It's. I, and I actually made their newsletter because I sent them a tweet telling them that the best part of uh, the entire process is the uh, excitement in waiting to see what you've got in your box. So, I mean, the entertainment value alone is worth it. Mm-hmm. But then it, you get awesome stuff like this, too. Um, the first 500 people that sign up... And there you are in the newsletter, by the yeah. way. Uh, the first 500 people that sign up get entered into a drawing to win the, uh, a Nexus tablet. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, so. is that still going on? Yeah. Well, I think I don't know. Um, I was number two hundred five, so watch uh, me be like five hundred one or something <laughs> like that. Um, and each each month they pick one of their members to win a, a loot crate that's worth uh, three hundred to four hundred dollars. Nice. So I mean, it, it's worth it on a month to month basis. Uh, Bo Diggity, uh WMS in the chat room, that's AJ there, uh, uh, says that he, he enjoys waiting to find out what he gets in his box. It's usually shame. <laughs> Actually, the uh, <laughs> the Hulk cologne smells like uh, a woodsy aquatic type smell. So is that something you're going to be wearing around? You're going you're gonna to wear it so you don't smell the 24 hours of uh, Chachi Plays? Oh, dude, I wore it to work today. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna wear it yesterday. I completely and like, all the ladies noticed. No even one, some of the guys. No one noticed. Nope. No. But anyhow, it, well, it, yeah, well, that's a great. So it's, it's called Hulk Smash, right? Yeah. So when everybody says, "Hey, what are you wearing?" Hulk Smash. Hulk Smash. And uh, they have <laughs> they have a cologne an or perfume for the ladies mm-hmm. for every member of the Avengers. Yeah. Well, because of the card describes all of them, right? Yeah. Yeah. So I mean, it, it's it. I, it's pretty, uh, pretty awesome. I just realized I, I took gum when I have to talk for three hours. So, oh well. Oh well. <laughs> At least I'll be awake, right? Suck the juice out of it. Pump it up. Pump it up. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Now that I spent uh, five minutes pitching a product, it's an awesome thing. No, no, no. You know what? Are we, what are we talk about products all day. We talk about phones that we like. We talk about the goofy stuff that uh, that, that, that Fuzzwad uh, sends us on Fancy. Yeah. Um, we can talk about the stuff that we want to get, stuff that we have that th- we think are awesome. That's, that's exactly why we're here. We, it's all about products, Chachi, and that's one of them. Please sponsor us, Luke Crate. Yes, please. You should tweet Take him again. Fee. You should tweet him. You should tweet him again uh, uh, to sponsor us, since they know who you are to put you in the newsletter. <laughs> And a very accurate uh, observation from AJ in the chat room. Rob is going to ruin Frank on the internet. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm, I'm just waiting for one of these days for, for Rob just to jump through the computer and strangle Don't me worry when I'm about it. fancy. Don't worry about it. Don't worry about <laughs> it. Hey, Frank, uh, before we go into the, uh, the Let's Play and we start naming characters that you look like... <laughs> I just have to say that right now you're looking especially uh, fuzzy-haired trollish. Hmm. 
you're, you're, <laughs> yeah, he looks like his butt should be hanging out on top of a pencil. Yeah. <laughs> you're looking like a troll. Oh, I'm sorry. Exactly. Um, all right. And, and unfortunately, the stories I have go back to Google. Sorry about that, guys. Um, so, uh, and, 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 and Fuzzy, you're, you're again, you're, you're a Google guy. You, you're probably following this stuff. Uh, but this one came up from, uh, I believe, The Verge. Yes. Google to open a wallet app to third-party passes, loyalty cards, and IDs. That could be cool. Oh, yeah, that, that could actually... Um, it, it's funny. You say that, and it uh, makes me think of a story that I read in, like, Time or People or something, like, four or five years ago, mm. where there were talks about having just one card um, that would be one like your card driver's license, your all. passport, yeah. your wallet for like all your credit cards, your cash, your debit, just everything to have it all in one thing. Um, <laughs> very nice, AJ. Uh, but no, that that's what it seems like, like that that's all you'll need. Like you won't necessarily need, uh, need to carry anything besides maybe if, some places still require your physical driver's license that you're issued. Hmm. Other than that, yeah, it looks like it'll replace your wallet, literally. That could be cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I could see that being interesting. And, and but again, where will yeah, I carry my paper monies? And yeah, it's like it's like it's like passport, but they have NFC. And, and now, if the rumor, rumors hold true, uh, the new iPhone isn't going to have NFC anytime soon. So, so this is this is Google kind of being out in front on this, like like they've been pretty good at. Um, we'll see how it goes, but they'll they'll find all the problems first. Will they put? Will they make a special case that allow me to put my paper monies in it? So it's an actual Google wallet. Yeah, like a phone wallet. It make you know what makes sense, doesn't it? In the long run, if you just have, you know, as long as you're not carrying like a bunch of ones or anything like that. Yeah. You know, yeah, your phone on you. It's just as important as your credit cards that you have in your wallet. So you don't want to lose the freaking thing. Right. Why not? I need a place to put my paper monies. <laughs> but, um... Yeah, you don't understand. Every time I get paid, I withdraw all the money that's not going to bills, and I roll around on it first. That's it, a sad amount, though, isn't it? It is. <laughs> <laughs> it's everything. Hey, I pull it all out. I have to get it... Roll like, around in it. Go back the next day. Get it deposited. <laughs> yep. I have to get it, like, nickels. Hmm... For the make, make a yeah, um, now what what is this? Um, Did I just break you? No 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 I'm I'm I'm, I'm uh, watching the chat room. Um, well, you're watching AJ just drunk post throughout the. Oh, uh, was he chat drunk room. posting? Or what, well, no, just, not drunk post. He's only three beers deep. On but, Galaxy Nexus, the battery is the NFC chip. Yes. So uh, uh, if you're looking to buy an extended battery off of Amazon, you need to be careful which one you're looking at to make sure that it is NFC enabled. mm Hmm. Because you could end up with a non-NFC Galaxy Nexus if you just buy the cheapest first thing you find. So on that note, if you have any conversation or anything you want to hit us up, hit us up at AwesomeCast.com. Um, check us out. Who are contact you? Contact us at contact at AwesomeCast.com, at AwesomeCast on Twitter. Uh, we're on the iTunes Roku box and everything else. Uh, thanks, Frank, for joining us once again, talking some Google Phone stuff. Yep. Anytime. Chachi is at uh, insertcointobegin.com, as Word. well as Frank's there, too. Word. Yep. I do what I can. There you go. And uh, go check out uh, sogertronmedia.com for everything else going on here. Uh, we're, of course, here live at the Awesome Cast. It's starting all night long at live.sogertronmedia.com. Um, so you can check us out starting at 7 p.m. Eastern time. And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Thanks to our chat room. Being awesome as usual. You've been our awesome audience. Have an awesome week. <laughs>